If you're looking to start creating YouTube videos, chances are is you don't need a camera that's gonna make it harder for you to actually start creating videos. So that's why in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the best options when it comes to cameras for beginners. I'll be talking about some pros and cons, as well as some features that you need to know about with these cameras so that you make the right purchase and buy the right camera to start creating YouTube videos. Let's go. You gotta just press record. This video is brought to you by StreamYarn. Hey, what is up? It's Omar, it's Corey with Think Media, and this channel is all about helping you with the best tips and tools to help build your influence on YouTube. And now when it comes to buying a camera, I really think about two things to consider. First, it's that the camera you go with gives you what you are looking for and is easy to use. The second thing to note is that the camera you end up going with gives you the ability to grow with it. And what I mean by that is the ability or maybe potential to swap out the lenses or add some accessories like mics or lighting to it. All these things come into play, especially with different use cases, like if you're gonna live stream. Now, I'll be going through five different cameras and as I talk about these cameras, I'll actually be using them so that you get a good example of what they look like. The first camera being the smartphone that's in your pocket. So I really love shooting videos on the smartphone because hands down it's the most easiest way to start creating content because it's simply just turn on the camera and go. I'm actually using my iPhone 13 mini which is like the cheapest version of the iPhone that you can get and I have the, a wireless mic hooked up and that's what's cool about smartphones is you can totally accessorize them and another th cool thing about smartphones is that they have two different lenses so right now I'm using the wide angle lens on it which in you know good lighting looks really great and is awesome for vlogging and so if you're looking to get more of a tighter shot you could turn on the other lens which this is kind of like the main lens the medium wide lens on the iPhone mini uh, but I know smartphones go up to you know, three, four lenses nowadays, which is crazy. All that to say, uh, shooting on a smartphone is just one of the easiest ways to just get started making YouTube videos. You know, in the past, I would say that smartphones' biggest flaw was that they don't really give you a blurry background, but you know, as of late, not only do they, the, like the last shot you just saw, has a nice blurry background when using that main lens on an iPhone 13, uh, but now uh, this iPhone has implemented cinematic mode, uh, which gives you an artificial background, not real, not a real blurry background, but an artificial blurry background, which is what a lot of people are looking for. And so when we're talking about cameras uh, that you're looking for that will give you the look you're going for, uh, an iPhone 13 is one of the best options, and I have the cheapest one. Uh, I know I'm saying, generally speaking, the smartphone will allow you to do all these things, but I would say if you're considering making YouTube videos, not a bad investment would be to get a newer smartphone because you're actually gonna use it as a workhorse camera. So I actually invested into an iPhone 13 mini, uh, which is the cheapest. However, I did get more space. And so with that being said, I would say the biggest con to using your smartphone to create content uh, most likely will be that this is your smartphone. You use it for phone calls, use it for text messaging, uh, and so it might fill up in space and things like that. So planning ahead and investing in a smartphone you know you're gonna use to create content is not the worst idea and I think is actually a great idea, especially being all the things you can do with a smartphone. You can get good lighting and a good mic and it'll sound and look phenomenal, especially if you're out and about and you have good lighting even with the sun. And another incredible thing about using your smartphone to create YouTube videos is that it's probably the only 4K camera that that you can film videos in and edit them and then post them. Like you're talking like the entire process of creating YouTubes could be done on one device, which I think is something to take into consideration. But although the smartphone is one of the best ways to get started uh, creating YouTube videos, if you're ready to make a purchase and you actually do just wanna buy a camera and you wanna uh, you know, go legit from the get-go, there are some great camera options. So I'm actually gonna pass it to Nolan from the Think Team and he's gonna talk about the GoPro and the best use cases for that camera. Take it away, Nolan. Thanks, Omar. Now, I totally agree. The GoPro really is a fantastic camera for beginners, mainly because it's automatic. So I can just pull this out, I can hit record, and I don't really have to worry about shutter speed, and aperture, ISO. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't really matter on this GoPro. What you're seeing right now is the GoPro Hero 10, and it's a $500 camera. You can get the GoPro Hero 9 for $400, so that's gonna matter if you are in the price range for buying a camera like this. But really this camera is gonna be great for those adventurers. If you're someone who likes to hike or you like to go surfing or do really cool stuff, this is a great camera because it's waterproof, it's dust resistant, and you can just kind of throw it around and do a lot with this camera, whereas you can't do that with most cameras. Now I also like the colors that you get out of the GoPro. Right now this is just ungraded, so this is the colors you're gonna get straight out of the camera, and it looks pretty good. 
You're also able to shoot in 4K resolution and up. So if you need to crop in a little bit, you can definitely do that with this camera because you have that extra space there. Now, if you are someone who does like to go on adventures and you just need that action camera, this is definitely the perfect camera for you. When it comes down to it, this isn't really the best vlogging camera because right now I have a shotgun microphone, a cheap one and the media mod. And it just kind of builds up when you start to add that stuff on it. And it's kind of needed because the audio on the GoPro isn't the best. However, if you are someone who just wants to go on hikes, you want to record cool memories or get really cool underwater shots the GoPro is a beast when it comes to that it's really small and it packs a lot inside of this camera now the cons would be that this camera doesn't really give you that blurry background that you can get with other cameras however it does have 4k so you're able to kind of punch in but that can be a con if you don't have the space to actually edit 4k or you don't have a great computer then these file sizes might be a little bit too big for you and those would be some of the cons when going with the GoPro but overall for a beginner this is a fantastic camera and it's super cool in all the different ways that you can use this thing so i definitely think that the gopro deserves to be on the list for the best cameras for beginners thank you so much nolan for the gopro man the gopro is such a cool camera i just think it's one of the easiest cameras to use because there's not too many things going on and if you're definitely one that travels or does fun stuff a cool way to capture that is with a GoPro. But the next camera I wanna talk about is the Sony ZV-1. This is a point and shoot camera that comes in at around $748 at the time of shooting this video here in the US. And what's so cool about this camera is that similar to the GoPro, you kinda of get everything in the package. Like this isn't a camera that you could change the lens on. It is a camera with a lens built into it. And it's a very versatile lens being that it's a 24 to 70 equivalent lens, meaning, you know, I'm about 24 uh, millimeters here and I could zoom all the way into 70 uh, just like you see right here. But I don't know if you want to see the pores of my face. That's kind of weird. So I'm not going to do that to you. But this is an incredible camera that straight out of the box looks incredible. It shoots 4K video, has no record limit, um, has a great image straight out of the camera and is also great for live streaming as well because it has a clean HDMI. So if you plan on leveling up maybe your live streams or even your video conference calls, the ZV-1 is a great camera to do so. Another cool feature about the Sony ZV-1 is that there's an internal ND filter inside of the camera so that when I am filming outside, I can actually put on that uh, ND filter and it will give me a nice blurry background, which for a camera this small to give me this much blurry background, I think is pretty sweet. And the camera also has a flip out articulating screen so you could simply see yourself when you are filming yourself. Another cool thing about the ZV-1 is that it has incredible autofocus, specifically eye autofocus, and its ability to really track your eye no matter where you are is uh, just really impressive in my book. Another really cool feature about Sony cameras as of 2020 that I don't hear much people talk about is their intelligent auto modes. This isn't just your simple program auto like other camera brands. No, like Sony does an incredible job at being able to identify a scene and adjust settings accordingly. So if you wanna just keep it in intelligent auto video mode or even photo mode, and you're gonna be super happy with the results. However, I would say the biggest con when it comes to this camera is, is the focal length. The fact that you cannot change the lens might be something that you may struggle with. But if you like what this looks like, and I'm, I'm about arm's length distance, maybe a little bit closer to arm's length distance, then you're gonna be okay. But most people who like to vlog typically like more of the wide shot uh, to show off more what's happening around you. And the only way you could do that with the ZV-1 is to buy uh, this accessory that's about $50. Um, some people would say it's a little impractical. I think it's a pretty cool accessory. Uh, I used to have it on the camera itself. That is the Sony ZV-1, an incredible camera. And I actually uh, will post links down to every camera I talk about down in the description below, as well as some of the videos that we've made around these cameras. And so if you wanna go deeper into any camera, be sure to check out those links down in the description. So this next camera, I would just be straight up with you. It's also a Sony camera, but this is, probably my favorite camera for creating content, and that is the Sony ZV-E10. This is a $798 camera, so it's just about $50 more than the uh, Sony ZV-1. However, the biggest difference, 100%, is the fact that it has interchangeable lenses. 
So if you're looking to get a different look out of the camera, you can simply change the lens and get either a more wide shot, a more compressed shot. Right now I'm shooting on the kit lens that comes with the camera at this price point. Uh, but I love this camera for so many reasons. One reason is that it's small. It also has a flip out screen so you can see yourself. It also has the mic jack so you can plug in a mic. Uh, it also shoots in 4K. It also has awesome autofocus. It has all the things that the ZV-1 has and just a little bit more. One of the absolute coolest features about the ZV-E10 is when using it for live streaming. All you need is a USB cable, no special software, no special hardware, just a USB cable, plug into your computer or laptop, and you can use this camera for live streams and Zoom calls and things like that, which leads me to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is StreamYard. StreamYard is how we go live here on Think Media and our Think Media podcast channel, as well as our private Facebook groups. StreamYard makes it so easy to do live streams. You could share your screen if you're doing a slideshow, or you can upload videos that you can play on your live stream, but probably one of the coolest features is that you could bring on guests so easily so you can conduct interviews with multiple people and really it's one of the best ways and the most easiest ways to live stream. Shout out to StreamYard for sponsoring this video and if you want to check them out and try them out yourself be sure to check out the link down in the description below. I think the Sony ZV-10 is definitely one of my favorite cameras and is like the number one camera I recommend most new content creators who are looking to get into creating YouTube videos. Now there's just one more camera that I want to show you and I would say up to this point it is the most popular YouTube camera of all time and that has to be Canon M50 Mark I or the Canon M50 Mark II. Uh, these are both small cameras from Canon. The best selling camera I think of all time when it comes to creating content and YouTube videos. The Mark I comes in at $664 at the time of shooting this video. Uh, but let's make sure it's clear. I got a faster car now, so. Um, all that to say, this is a very affordable mirrorless camera like the ZV-E10. It's also a mirrorless camera. Uh, what's cool about this camera is that it is also interchangeable lens camera and so if you wanted to upgrade the lens and you wanted to start vlogging and get like this lens right here which I have it's an 11 to 22 um, if I zoom out I got a super wide shot and uh, it really makes creating content a lot more easier when you have this much room to work with especially when it comes to vlogging it also has a flip out screen and just without a doubt Canons are just really good for beginners because they're super easy to use. There's even beginner modes uh, with these kind of cameras. So it actually kind of like teaches you how to use the camera and get the most out of it, which is what I love. I would say the biggest con of the Canon M50 is that it doesn't shoot good video in 4K. It's kind of like unreliable. It's a super big crop. The autofocus is gone. Like, like right now I'm shooting in 1080 and I'm scaling it up to 4K because all the other cameras, including my smartphone shot in 4K, so that's just something to take into consideration. However, it is important to note that most people watch their videos on their phones and you can't quite necessarily watch 4K on your phone yet. So uh, even though I upload a 4K video file on Think Media, if you're watching this on your phone, you're watching it in 1080. So you wouldn't really be able to know the difference in that sense. However, it is important to note that nowadays you can get 4K on your smartphone and the 4K in the M50 isn't that reliable. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts um, on which camera you like the best um, and which one you think would be the best for getting started. Um, as far as my opinion goes, I guess uh, to answer the question, what is the best camera for beginners? I definitely think uh, the smartphone is what you need to get started with. Like start creating videos with your smartphone. Creating YouTube videos has so many implied tasks and the chances are is most people who actually invest in cameras before getting started end up being paralyzed by all the things that come with using a camera. But just hitting record on a smartphone and just getting started is what you really need to do. Now, if I were to choose, if I started YouTube today for the very first time, especially knowing what I know now, the camera I would actually invest in is the Sony ZV-E10. I really believe that's the best camera and value you get for the price. This camera, not only is it easy to use, but it gives me the look that I'm going for and it gives me the ability to grow, knowing that I can change the lens um, to get a better look or I can film long form videos, like if I wanted to start a video podcast or something or even shoot long form videos if it's like this and the ability to live stream so easy and so I can level up my uh, Zoom calls as well as my live stream. So, I mean, really, it's it's probably the best camera that, that checks off those two boxes that I mentioned earlier in the video. But that would be my thoughts, and I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you got value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And uh, we really do believe that making an investment is what you're doing because you can actually use YouTube 
YouTube to make some money. And we teach how you can do that in our free one hour YouTube class, which you can find at thinkmasterclass.com. And I'll post a link down in the description below if you'd like to check out that free class. But if you wanna go deeper in any of these cameras that I talked about, make sure to check out the description below as well as some accessories I used as far as mics and things like that. But if you wanna check out another video from us here at Think Media, be sure to click or tap the screen and I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.